Right. But uh, I will talk to Sergeant Reagan and uh, again, y'all will follow up after the rest of the instructions. Okay. Got the time. Back off again, stop in that day for one second. Day one second. Off, off. Set it back down, gently. Making sure the flu is upright. So you're here, right? Now place it on safe because you're no longer using your weapon. Drop the magazine. Inspect it to make sure it's good. All right. Now ride the bolt board. Right board. Place it on semi. Fire. Close it. Close this. Time's up. Open up the right. Ground there, yep. Close it up. Place it on fire. Swing back up. It was fun. It was free. It was Now it's good. Uh, 
maintain uh, fighting position for two minutes. Load new round. Load a new round. There's the heat a little bit. Definitely nowhere near as bad as the other day. So the question was, uh, what differences do you see between a soldier who's uh, earned their expert infantry badge and those who have not yet? There's a lot of differences that you can recognize between a soldier who earns their expert infantry badge and does not. Uh, the first thing that you can tell is that they're able to receive information, process that information, and then execute in a perfect manner. Okay. And then I think you talked a little bit about pride and some other stuff. So maybe can you elaborate on that just a little bit? Of course. There is there is an extreme amount of pride uh, to earning your expert infantry badge. Um, it takes 30 different stations, you know, not only here at medical, but you have medical patrols and the weapons, all 10 stations each, and you got to run through each session perfectly. It's it's a tough, tough objective, but when you earn that expert infantry badge... It... We're at today and what's going on. Okay. Yeah, so today we are doing land navigation. It is an EIB task. Um, the purpose of it is to assess the individual soldier's ability uh, to navigate from one point to another on the, on the earth using a compass map and protractor. It's a skill level one task, like I said. Um, yeah. Okay, and so, just uh, letting you know, it's cheesy. Um, you want to kind of keep an eye yeah, on it, you just it if you have to. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, so, what differences do you see in a soldier that either has their expert infantry badge as opposed to one who does not? Okay, so the difference between soldiers who have their EIB or their ESB, um, in my opinion, I believe that they are more capable of conducting their skill level one task, like I said, because all it is is just an assessment of like their basic soldier skills. Um, you can count on a soldier who has their EIB or ESB uh, to be able to get things done without too much direct oversight, too much direct guidance. Um, and it seems like it's a good evaluation of people that are able to pay attention. Okay. And then 
why do you recommend your soldiers to go out and try to or compete to earn the expert infantry badge? So I definitely recommend to all my soldiers that they actually try to get their EIB um, or their ESB, I suppose. Um, because it is an assessment to show how much you actually care. Uh, it's an assessment to see how uh, competent you are, to see whether or not uh, you're capable of leading soldiers in the future. Um, there are pros and cons to doing this, but at the same time, it's a great assessment to see whether or not you can handle things from, uh, like what we're doing today, land navigation. Can you move from one point to another in a tactical environment, or in this case, a semi-tactical environment? Are you able to perform basic uh, troubleshooting techniques on weapons? Can you um, can you treat a casualty for a head wound? That that sort of thing. Can you operate the radios that we all use? It's it's it. It's, it lays the groundwork for the basic soldiering. Sure. And so, obviously, you're an expert infantry badge holder. What, what does that feel like when you finally earn it? It's a weight off your shoulders. It's definitely a weight off your shoulders because uh, you go through a minimum two weeks of train up uh, you know, and practicing with the test conditions. And then when you finally get it, um, it's the relief that you don't have to do it again, which is always positive. Um, but it's also, uh, I suppose, your own sort of vindication and validation that you... Uh, are in fact an expert in your craft. Sure. And would you say that when you see soldiers that have their expert infantry badge or expert soldier bag, that there's a little bit more pride in what they do? I would say yes. I would say that you can definitely tell, um, especially in the, in the months preceding, or excuse me, the months following your your EIB uh, testing, you can see that they kind of hold their head, hold their heads a little bit higher, um, and it's a it's a recognition from those around them that they know what they're doing and they earn what they got. Do you have anything else you want to add? I got nothing.